there guys, my name is Ross Hill, I'm a rig welder with Legion Fiber Fabricators and we have a big duplex job here at the, the Nishi Alberta shop. A lot of duplex here, a lot of duplex. Check out weldlive.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. Okay, so today we have Eli, our lead welder here, doing a welding duplex. It's 2205 duplex using 2209 fill metal. And uh, with these alloys and exotics, we'll be using a purge monitor. Uh, I have a Huntington Fusion and this, per uh, this one here, it belongs to Eli here, it's the inner purge. And you see these numbers here, these purge monitors are, um, they're the desktop model, so they're very, very precise. These read 999 parts per, per million and less. So they're meant for like, a, say like a titanium duplex, super duplex, nickel alloys kind of thing. So Eli is striving for, um, it depends, it depends on what the client wants for cleanliness of the oxides. If you, uh, if you go to 25 parts per million and less, so this will read 25 parts per million, then you'll have a nice, you'll have no heat tint, you'll have nice silver, there's no heat tint, there's not enough oxygen in the the, the, the pipe itself to form any oxides, because uh, it's not interacting, not enough oxygen to interact with the well puddle as the elevation temperature to form oxides to protect the metal. So you'll have uh, no heat tint. If you go, if this thing reads say like 30 to 60 parts per million, you'll start getting a light straw color, you'll get some uh, yellows, it'll start going up to like 60, 80, you'll get some brown colors, you'll get some gold. You go past 100 parts per million, you have like blues and purples and beyond. So if it's really detrimental, you get a really terrible purge, you'll start, especially on nickel alloys, say, say if we were welding a nickel alloy, when you're beyond 100 parts per million, you'll see like little pepper flakes, you'll see kind of like a skin floating on the well puddle. Uh, it gets to a point where the, the oxygen inside the pipe is so bad that your, your bevels will start dissolving in on itself and it's just gonna be a terrible purge. So on this duplex, we're striving for essentially less than 23 parts per million, 30, 40 around there, light straw color that's acceptable on the duplex here for this client. So if you look at the technique here, uh, Eli, he's just walking the cup and it's a, he's using a nice dabbing technique. So that kind of, uh, he essentially opens the keyhole. He's walking, he opens the keyhole uh, and then uh, internally inside the pipe, the it goes liquid and he just dabs onto the leading edge there and, it, and the well pole just gets taken from the fill metal and it just sucked in and it fills up the keyhole. It makes one ripple and it keeps going. Very fast, very fast, quick, efficient uh, speed here. Very quick technique. And you can see nice, nice heat affected zone here. So he'd be using a, I believe it's a 332 fill metal. It's very nice, precise technique, uh, depending on the gap and, and land and everything that's on there, but it should be a, a feather's edge, uh, minimal gap. So Eli's welling at about 12 o'clock. Now on this piping, uh, it depends on like the gap and, and uh, other misalignment and other uh, things you can deal with. He's at 12 o'clock, so he's gonna have a nice uh, uniform uh, root pass, a uh, nice deposition at 12 o'clock. If it gets to a point where the gap is starting to close up and you need to get more penetration, then you'll be welding it slightly more uphill. And if you're welding at that point, you'd be better off standing like this and walking away from yourself. Whereas, uh, depending on if you have a wider gap or um, misalignment or other kind of things, it's better if you have the torch this way and you're welding pulling the pile towards yourself and you're at 12 o'clock and slightly downhill. If you weld slightly downhill, you have a nice flat, nice flat root pass. Uh, if it's doing like say, a stainless steel, then you'll have uh, a flat puddle, but you, you might get a little bit of a line, a little bit of suck back. So a person has to be conscientious to where they're welding on this particular material. So Eli is putting a really nice hot pass on. He's using the 332 fill metal, making sure it gets nice in the groove and the gap in there. It has a really nice gold color to it. So what Eli, Eli will be doing is he'll do this, uh, this hot pass on there. The duplex, the max interface temperature, uh, according to the welding procedures, is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see, Eli has a very nice, he has a very nice purge going. It would have started at about less than, about around 25, you know, it would have been a good purge. And then when you have the root pass in, and the root pass is fully completely finished, the, the parts per million of oxygen on the hot pass drops down to uh, less than 11 parts per million. And the way it works, say for example, if you have any heat tint on your root pass, the root pass would have been done at anywhere from 25 to 30 to 60 parts per million of oxygen. So even if you had any amount of heat tint, uh, you know, light straw colors, gold, bronze, etc., when you put the hot pass on, the hot pass drops down to 11 parts per million or less. It's a really good quality purge. And it has a wider heat effective zone. And when you put the hot pass on, it has a, a wider, uh, well, yes, wider heat effect zone, it heats up more than the material. Um, 
So it is actually, oh, and a better, uh, better quality of purge. So it actually takes and, and absorbs and it just sucks out a lot of the heat tip that is there. So you end up with a really nice, uh, if you get light straw color or even no heat tint at all, you get a really nice quality purge. This is something that's really, really noticeable in titanium, but other metals as well. Like a stainless, duplex, etc. It's just, it's just because of the purge quality gets better and better and the wide heat effective zone. So it kind of cleans up whatever's on the root path. You see, walking the cup offers us a very, very, uh, it's almost like a robotic movement. Uh, one of the things that Legion here is that all the welders, even in the skill proficiency test that we have, all the welders need to learn how to walk the cup on the root pass, filling and capping. Even something like a two inch skid 40 carbon steel pipe, we still walk the cup on the root, even if it's a position weld. It's all to, all to do with aesthetics, uh, uh, production, aesthetics, and it's just more robotic. It offers a higher quality weld, less void, less defect. It's a very constant movement, very continual robotic movement. So these exotics and alloys. So carbon and chrome, for the most part, we'll do a, a TIG root pass, possibly even a TIG hot pass, depending on the welding procedure. And then we'll use stick for fill and cap. Uh, when it comes to stainless alloys, duplex, super duplex, nickel alloys like half alloy, mono, Inconel, copper nickel, um, titanium, aluminum, we'll do TIG all the way out. Many years the, in the uh, welding industry in Alberta, uh, it was all solely based on production. Uh, you have a stainless steel pipe weld, for example, that would be a TIG root. And if not a take root, then it would have been um, modified towards circuit root pass. And it would have been a uh, stick fill and cap. Stick welding on stainless is not very aesthetically pleasing. It's not very attractive and it's a little bit tricky. But essentially it's not, it's not a pretty weld. It's not as pretty as TIG welding. But it's productive and it's fast. But uh, when Legion came along, we had TIG on everything. Everything is TIG welded. Higher quality, much higher quality, higher aesthetics. We offer very, very pretty attractive weld. And that's essentially dominating the industry now is aesthetics. But also we do have the production because we, we, uh, we are able to get a lot of this welds out. Something like a 52 inch 688 wall 304H stainless steel pipe will be TIG weld all the way out. And we can get those things out pretty quickly because there's a lot of techniques that you learn from TIG welding to get uh, a lot of quality fill, to be more productive, more efficient, more faster. And the cap pass being very aesthetically pleasing and robotic, walk in the cup, it just looks like a really high quality product at the end of the day. Hey there guys, no thank you for watching the video here. Our lead welder and also a, a welding supervisor moving down the Houston, Texas there. Uh, did the welding here, 10 inch schedule 40. He's gonna be moving on to the next large size pipe. Uh, if you like the, the welding videos that you see here, uh, you can follow on Instagram and YouTube for WeldTube. And also if you like the welding helmets that we're welding, also the welding helmet that Eli was welding, wearing, and this one here, weldlife.com. Thank you.